Before I get into today's episode about Daniel Sorensen, which I do think is a pretty good episode, actually, Daniel Sorensen, he's just a, a very fun player to talk about, very smart guy, underrated in my opinion. But what else is underrated is SeatGeek. How's that for a transition? SeatGeek, it's the best place to get tickets to concerts, to sporting events, you know? Hey, listen, basketball season and hockey season are underway, baseball season right around the corner. I mean, some baseball tickets you can get for like basically free, and it becomes even cheaper when you use the promo code JKS. You use the promo code JKS, you will save $20 off of your first purchase. That's right, $20 off just like that, so make sure that you use the promo code JKS. The link is in the description below if that is something you're interested in. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. So, of course, since it's Super Bowl Sunday, we're talking about all of these star players, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Jimmy Garoppolo, we're talking about the 49ers running game. But there's one guy I feel like we probably should be talking about a little bit more, and that's Daniel. I just feel like the playoff run he's been having, and honestly, he's kind of one of those guys that always shows up in the big games, and he certainly has this season. He's done great in these past two playoff games, and is a huge reason the Chiefs are at this point. Is he their best defender? No, far from it. But is he playing very good football right now? Absolutely, yes. He's playing very smart football, and I'll show you what I mean with this play. What Houston is going to do is they're going to run play action, which hopefully will get Sorensen to run to the right side of the screen, try to crash in, try to make a play on the halfback, especially since he's not going to get blocked at the line. So he's going to think, okay, I have to hurry over to try to see if I can make a play. But then what's going to happen is that they're going to send their tight end over to that side of the screen. Sorensen will have crashed in. Now a tight end can get by him. Watson can hit him and they can score a touchdown. That's the way that on paper this play is designed to work for Houston. But after the ball snapped, look how Sorensen just totally isn't fooled. He just read this play perfectly. He realizes what's going on and he knows it's going to be a play to his direction. He knows he's the contained guy. So he has to make sure he is the one who's over there potentially being able to make a play. So... Very good play, very good read from Sorensen. Not great athletic play, but a great mental play. But then he is able to run over and still make a pretty good athletic play. He helps make the tackle. And that's what Sorensen can do, is he's just a smart guy to have on the field. He's just one of those intelligent guys. I think him and Matthew are both just so smart. Their football IQ is so great. That could be a reason that they have a real chance to win this football game, to win the Super Bowl. Even though their defense, we've all talked about it, it's not what the 49ers defense is. We all get it. At the same time, they do have the guys who can make plays, and one of those guys absolutely is Sorensen. He's just making good reads consistently, and this play is an example of that, where what's going to happen is that that's going to be the blocking concept, but also what the Houston Texans are going to do is they're going to pull their right guard over to block a linebacker like that. The reason they're doing this is because it's going to be a run to the top half of the screen, so they're trying to get everybody away in that direction, meaning the closest unblocked man is going to be the safety, Daniel Sorensen, all the way over there. But watch this read he makes. He quickly realizes what's going on and is able to run over and helps make the tackle. So, and actually makes a pretty good tackle in that. I mean, he was having some help, but he, he did a pretty good job of stopping him in his tracks. Even though it was actually a first down, Sorensen couldn't really control that. You know, the front seven didn't do a great job of getting around a block to make a tackle, which, you know, that's fine. That happens in a football game. But give credit to Sorensen for finding a way to still have a positive impact in the play and still find a way to not allow that to be a, a big play or any more big than it could have been. And like, watch, this play is another example, but of almost the exact opposite of what happened on the first play, where what's going to happen is that this time, Houston has two backs in the game. They're going to send one of them to the bottom half of the screen, and hopefully Sorensen will stay out in that direction. So therefore, when they have a handoff just up the middle, now Sorensen has taken himself out of the play. Doing things like this, as opposed to just straight up blocking him, can be very key because it can just give you more space to work with, and so if you can turn it into 10-on-10 10 10 football, it just makes things that much easier. But watch what Sorensen does here. I find this very interesting, and it's something I actually talked about when I'm talking about the 49ers going into this game, is don't necessarily look at the quarterback and the halfback. Sometimes look at the offensive line. Well, look at Sorensen. He is completely looking at the halfback who is in his direction. He is not looking at the Sean Watson right here. He looks at him and says, oh, okay, you don't have a ball, then I don't need to worry about you. He then steps over, is able to deliver a hit on the halfback, and just like that, they're able to get a stop. There was also the fake punt, which actually, if you look at it, it's pretty crazy what Sorensen does here. So that's Sorensen, and that's the Houston Texan that is going to be receiving the ball to try to run up to the top half of the screen, try to see if he can get the first down. 
and watch how Sorensen almost perfectly mirrors him. This is just good fundamental football. He's just saying, okay, you take a couple steps in, I take a couple steps in. You take a couple steps out, I take a couple steps out. The way this play is supposed to work for the Houston Texans is that they're going to have those two players block those two Chiefs. Then the player I was talking about earlier gets the ball himself, runs up to the top half of the screen, sees if he can get it. But watch how Sorensen just makes a fantastic break on this because he is aware. is able to make the tackle. They do not get a first down. And that was absolutely a huge play in that game. If Sorensen doesn't make that play, I mean, who knows what happens? I, I think the Chiefs probably still find a way to win just because, the, you know, the way that game was going. But it definitely would have been a huge momentum shift for the Texans. And maybe they could have won the game had they converted on that play. And there were also some plays just like this one where it's going to be a cover two man actually and he is not a safety who is deep right now. He's actually just covering a player one on one. He's going to be trying to cover that route. So that's what he's going to try to do here and he's going to do a pretty good job in coverage here. Doesn't allow much separation. Maybe there is a small window where Tannehill could try to make this throw but also you look at Tannehill. He is currently getting flushed outside the pocket so... This is a good play so far for the Chiefs, but the downside, of course, is Tannehill, who is now getting outside the pocket, can run the ball, and, you know, it's man coverage. So, what do you do? You have to cover your guy, and at the same time, you want to keep an eye on Tannehill in case he does run so you can make a tackle. But watch how Sorensen does both the entire time, covers his guy and keeps his head downfield, and then delivers a big hit on Tannehill, does not allow him to get the first down. Just, again, a really aware play of understanding your surroundings, knowing what's going on, and then also being athletically physical enough to be able to run over and make that tackle. That's sometimes the difference in these big games, is the guys who can make those aware plays. At this point, it's the Super Bowl. Everybody's talented. It's about who can understand what's going on, who can realize what's going on. And Sorensen, absolutely, he has that awareness, and that could be key coming into Super Bowl 54. It really could. And it also makes things just that much more difficult to deceive. You know, it's hard to deceive this Chiefs team when you have Sorensen and Matthew. Obviously, this video has been just about Sorensen. I can make another very similar video just about Matthew. They're both great at that kind of thing. And I do think that that could cause the 49ers some trouble. It definitely caused the Titans some trouble when they tried to be creative. Like, on this play, it's going to be... They're going to basically fake as though it's going to be a screen pass to the top half of the screen. But then what's going to happen is that Henry is going to run up to the bottom half of the screen, and it's going to be a screen pass to him. They're going to try to get some Kansas City players to run up to the top half of the screen. And after the ball is snapped, it's not really going to work out that well. I mean, you look at Tannehill, he's doing a good job of selling this. You can't ask for anything better. He's turned his body, he's clearly looking as though he's going to throw it in that direction. But Sorensen already figured this out. He already realized what he has to do. He is not fooled whatsoever. He's looking over at Henry and saying, I still got to cover Henry. That's my assignment on this one. It could go to Henry. And quite frankly, the play would be way too far to the top half of the screen if it is a screen pass in that direction that I probably wouldn't be able to make a play anyways. So make sure I just take away Henry here. And since the play does come to Henry, he's able to run over, help make a tackle. And again, it's smart plays like that. Understanding your role, realizing what's going on. Football is a game of deception, but it's really tough when you're playing against a guy like Sorensen who doesn't get deceived easily. He's just a fun player to talk about. Definitely an X factor heading into this Super Bowl. He is one of the guys that probably should be getting a little bit more credit. He's on a pretty great playoff run right now. And I remember he had a pretty good playoff run last year. So, you know, he's definitely someone who shows up in the big games. I fully expect him to show up in Super Bowl 54. I do think that oftentimes in the big games, just someone making a smart play can be the difference. You know, some, the thing about football, which is so fascinating, is that most of these plays only have a small impact on the game, but there will be those occasional plays that have huge impacts on the game. So if, you know, someone like Daniel Sorensen can get a, you know, a big stop on a, a fourth down or on a third down, that can absolutely swing the whole game. And the way he'll probably do it isn't just with his physicality, although he is a pretty solid physical player. It'll probably be with, with his intelligence, honestly. I mean, that's kind of the way football is in a lot of ways. It's sometimes less about who is just the better physical athlete, and it is. It's a chess match. I mean, I think that's why you guys like watching breakdowns. That's why I like breaking things down. Because, listen, nobody's going to want to really watch a breakdown of guys running a 100-meter dash. We enjoy this kind of stuff because of the strategy of it. At least that's why I enjoy it. And so that's why I think it's fun when you have a, a Daniel Sorensen who is a really good chess player. And so I definitely can see him having an absolutely huge impact in this game. Also, one more thing just before we go. 
Uh, definitely be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. My links are in the description below. What I've been doing is I've been posting every day on there. I've been posting like an actual clip, an actual just one play breakdown. I'm doing that every day. So you can get some more extra sort of bite size breakdowns that way. Just quick 20 seconds. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely follow me below. Or if you don't care about that kind of stuff, no worries. You can just stay here and follow me on, on uh, YouTube. Forgot the name of the site for some reason. You can stay here and follow me on YouTube. That's totally cool as well. Uh, either way, I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.